Markov equations are somewhat related to quadratics because square roots and quadratic functions are inverses. Okay, the opposite of squaring something is making the square root of something. So they're semi-related. That's kind of why I brought it up. Um, but your steps, somewhat, if you want to call them steps, you've got to isolate the radical. Okay. So some of the problems that we're going to do, you really don't have to do much as far as isolating the radical. It's kind of already done for you. For example, the first one, that radical doesn't have anything outside of it um, as far as operation, so you can skip that step. As I just mentioned, the opposite of taking the square root of something is squaring it. So once we isolate that radical, we're going to square both sides of the equation. Then we're going to solve for x sometimes that does require factoring. That's another reason why we should have a one that goes out. And you should always, always, always check your answers. Okay, a lot of times we kind of skip over that part, um, even though anytime you have an equation, you can check your answers. But you definitely have to check them here because sometimes you get what we call extraneous solutions, um, where it means you get it as an answer, but when you plug it back in, it doesn't satisfy the equation the way it's supposed to. Okay, so like I said, <clears throat> these problems are coming off that worksheet. We've already got them written down. We've got a number that can either be number one. We're not doing all of those examples. We're going to kind of skip around. And we're going to start with number one there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so as I mentioned while I was explaining the steps, this one is already isolated. Okay, the 2 minus 14n is under the square root. We cannot change those numbers until we get rid of that square root. And we get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. You know, if you do it in any equation, if you do it to one side, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side. So 10 squared is 100. Squaring a square root gets rid of the square root. You are just left with what's under the square root. It does not change what's under the square root. It just gets rid of it. Okay. And then, this is just a regular linear equation that we're used to solving. Solve it like you would any other equation. One, uh, subtract 2 from both sides. 100 minus 2 is 98. And then divide by negative 14. And is that 7? Negative 7? So negative 7 is your n. As I mentioned, you should always, always, always check your answer. <coughs> Um, to make sure, plug it into that right side um, to ensure that you did it correctly and that it, it does equal, in this case, it's got to equal 10 and it does. Okay, so this one's okay. Negative 7 is not an extraneous solution. Negative 7 is the solution of this equation. Alright, let's look at one like number 4. Okay, let's look at one like number 4. Now, Number four looks slightly different on your paper than it does up here. Okay, yours is vertically. It's got P over five. I just formatted wise. This is how I had to type it in. Um, but that divided by five is under the square root. Okay, so again, we don't have to do any isolating for this problem. We just need to square both sides. So on the left side, we've got P over five is equal to four. And then we're dividing by 5, so to get rid of that, we multiply both, both sides by 5, and that gives us that P is equal to 20. And that one's really simple to plug in. 20 divided by 5 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. Question? What about what? Yes, I am actually going to do number 5. Okay, now number 5. Sometimes you'll end up with some of these where it has a square root on both sides. Well, there are two ways of looking at this, okay? So if you have a square root on both sides and there's nothing outside of those square roots, the only way for this equation to be equal, for the left side to be equal to the right side, is if what's under the square root on each side is equal to each other. That's the only way it's going to work out. Or you can look at it from the perspective of what we've been doing. To get rid of a square root, you square both sides. Well, in this case, when we square both sides, it removes the square root from both sides. Okay, so either way, the square root on both sides goes away. Either you're right that you square both sides, or 
you just look at it from, well, P over T must be equal to 20 minus 2P. All right. Now, we haven't had to deal with this yet where there's a variable on both sides, but y'all know how to solve those equations. Okay, you need the variable to be on one side. Well, I'm going to move it to the left side um, since the only thing on the left side is the variable, and on the right side I've also got a constant. So we're adding P over 2, or that's just another way of saying 1 half P. Okay, we're adding 2P to that, so that's 2.5P or 5 halves. I prefer fractions over decimals. Because when we get to this step, let me show you a way that you need to be thinking about this. Usually you would tell me what do we need to do. We need to divide both sides by 5 halves, right? Well, you can multiply it by 2, but in one step, you can multiply both sides by 2 fifths. Okay? Dividing by a fraction, we talked about this the other day, right? Yeah, we just talked about this yesterday. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. All right, because the 2 over 2 is going to cancel, the 5 over 5 is going to cancel. We've just got P. And then if I'm trying to evaluate 20 times 2 fifths, there's two ways of looking at it. Um, you can either look at it as 20 times 2 is 40, 40 divided by 5 is 8. Or you can look at it as 20 over 5 is 4, so 4 times 2 is 8. Either way, you get the fact that 8 is the answer. Um, and if you plug that into both sides, uh, it does work. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So the left side equals 2. Uh, 20 minus 2 times 8. 2 times 8 is 16. 20 minus 16 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So P equals 8 is our solution. All right. Now, finally, we're going to look at one number 10, where we have to isolate the radical. Okay. Notice this one now has a number in front of the square root. So we're going to have to get rid of that 8. Now, you cannot change what's inside the square root. It's not like you distribute that 8 into the square root. We need to move that 8 to the other side. Well, it's being multiplied by the square root. So that means we need to divide both sides by 8. 24 divided by 8 is 3. So we've got 3 is equal to the square root of n minus 1. Now it's isolated. So we can square both sides. So we get 9 equals n minus 1. Then we simply need to add 1 to both sides to get n equals 10 is our solution. Again, plugging it in, 10 minus 1 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 8 times 3, 24. So it is the solution. I think I've got an extraneous one here in a second. All right, let's look at number 13. Number 13. <clears throat> Going back to, it's already isolated, but check out what happens when we square both sides. When we square both sides, it's not a constant on the right side, it's x. So when we square x, we get x squared. This now becomes a quadratic equation. So thinking back to the warm-up, quadratic equations have to be equal to 0 to solve them. So I know that it requires moving two terms, but instead of moving the x squared to the other side and making it negative, I'm going to move the x and the 6 so that my um, quadratic term is not negative because we don't like to factor when the quadratic term is negative. So we need to add x and subtract 6. We can solve this by factoring. I think this is actually one that we know similar to that, but... Um, I don't know where n came from. I'm trying to talk and think and write at the same time. x plus 3 times x minus 2. So that means x equals negative 3 and positive 2 are solutions. Let's check them though. Okay, when we plug in negative 3, we get 6 minus negative 3, and that's supposed to be equal to negative 3. Well, subtracting the negative, same as adding a positive, 6 plus 3 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. 3 is not equal to negative 3. 
we've got to throw that out. That is an example of an extraneous solution. Okay, we get it as an answer in the process of solving, but when we plug it in to check, it doesn't work out. Let's check 2. <clears throat> 6 minus 2, the square root of that's supposed to be equal to 2. 6 minus 2 is 4, square root of 4 is 2. That one does work out. So in this case, 2 is the only solution to this problem. All right, and last example, let's look at number 17. And number 17. This one's definitely different from the ones we've done so far. Okay, step number one, isolate the radical. Right now, it's got negative x plus the radical, so we need to move that negative x to the other side. So let's move it by adding. So we've got the square root of 39 minus 2x is equal to x minus 2. Now, when we square both sides, you don't just square the x and square the 2. Okay, that is a binomial that's being squared. What do we have to do with that? We've got to FOIL it. Okay, that's like x minus 2 times x minus 2. It is not x squared minus 4. Okay, that would come from x minus 2 times x plus 2. So we've got to FOIL it out. x squared minus 4x plus 4 is really what the right side looks like. And then again, it's a quadratic, so we need to make this equal to 0. So add the 2x, subtract the 39, we get x squared minus 2x minus 35. So when we factor that, we got x minus 7 times x plus 5. So we get x equals positive 7 and negative 5 is the solution. <coughs> we definitely need to plug those back in. So when we plug them back in, we've got negative x, so that becomes negative 7 plus the square root of 39 minus 2 times 7. And that's supposed to be equal to negative 2. Let's see if it is. 39 minus 14 is 25. Square root of 25 is 5, and negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2, so positive 7 works. Let's see if negative 5 works. Now, it's negative x. x was already negative, so that becomes positive 5. 39 minus 2 times negative 5. Um, 2 times negative 5 is uh, positive 10, so that's 49. So we've got 5 plus 7. 5 plus 7 is not equal to negative 2, so negative 5 gets thrown out. Now, I know in these two cases, both times it was the negative solution that got thrown out. Don't assume that that's always the case. Okay, You can get negative answers that are not extraneous. Um, but a lot of times with these quadratic ones, the negative answers do get thrown out. But do not assume that that is automatically the case. Um, you may run into some, some that end up giving you two answers, and both the answers work. Okay? But usually one of them is extraneous and gets thrown out. Okay?